I'm going to show you how to make one of these cool 3D cutaway diorama micro world sorts of things with an imagery background, a little bit of bathymetry, and we're also going to have a lot of fun along the way. These are the beautiful Straits of Mackinac. The Mackinac Bridge spans Michigan's lower and upper peninsulas. And the water here is interesting. And the landscape around it is pretty beautiful. We are going to make this map of the glorious Straits of Mackinac. Buckle up! Here are my parents, Bert and Chris, on their honeymoon in Mackinac Island. Here's Dad looking sharp at the top of the fort, overlooking the Straits of Mackinac. Both of my parents are teachers, and so in the summer times, we would jam into the station wagon and tour all across the United States. And we'd look at holes in the ground and other holes in the ground. My dad was a geology teacher and geography teacher, and he would frequently use my mother as scale for his slides that he would take. And that also meant that almost every descriptive sign at a national park had to be photographed for posterity. And my dad has a great sense of humor, and he loves to make geological puns, including the word schists. But we grew up used to this, so we all just took it for granted. Here's my dad tossing a rock over the Rio Grande, showing us an interesting overhand form. Here's mom and dad. Remember making these boxes of garbage when you were in elementary school and junior high? A diorama? You do a book report, you could either write a book report or make a diorama. I always made the diorama because it was easy. And somewhat relatedly, I have a bad habit lately of falling asleep watching YouTube videos, specifically YouTube videos where people do epoxy pour tabletops. I can't stop. It's gorgeous. I mean, look at this. And dioramas and epoxy pour tabletops remind me of the beautiful work of Tao Rho Alpha, a USGS cartographer active in the 1970s and 80s. Look at this fabulous cutaway. So much information, so much beauty. There's actually a whole atlas published showing these things, but there's so much you can show in an extract diagram like this. Plus, they're just kind of fascinating. Here's a similar set of diagrams from Erwin Race, an amazing cartographer from the middle part of the last century. These are just captivating. How can we do something like this in ArcGIS Pro? Well, I'm going to start with the data. Now I'll grab the data from the NOAA Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory. I'm going to download Lake Michigan as a GeoTIFF format, which as it turns out, wasn't quite as easy as I thought. It was wrapped in a GZ, wrapped in in a tar file, but eventually I cracked the code. And here it is in ArcGIS Pro, a digital elevation model, a DEM of Michigan's bathymetry focused over Lake Michigan. If I zoom into my area of interest, I'm going to insert a map note. I'm gonna draw a polygon over just the area that I want to extract for my own map diorama. I'll draw a square here covering the Straits of Mackinac. Look at that cool little underwater river in feature. I'm going to fire up the geoprocessing tools and I'm going to choose extract by mask. I'm going to effectively clip out this bit of the DEM based on my polygon map node. I can get rid of the big original DEM. So now I have a DEM of just my area of interest. I've clipped it. And next I'm going to convert this to a local 2D scene. Did I say 2D? I meant 3D. But, you know, Michigan isn't renowned for its mountains and peaks and valleys. It's a pretty flat place. Are we stuck with the truth of geography as is, literally one-to-one? -one? No, we can stretch out this elevation. I'm going to activate the ground layer, and I'm going to give it a 25x vertical exaggeration. But look at all this extra shading that I have on the outside. And my default elevation service doesn't include bathymetry. So I'm going to duplicate my DEM, uncheck the default ground data, and I'm going to drop this DEM as my new ground surface. And now Pro is only aware of the elevation of this square and all the ancillary shading around the edges disappear. And what's more, I'm benefiting from the bathymetry because the default elevation service doesn't include underwater terrain. And now I can see this cool feature cutting its way through the Straits of Mackinac underwater. So I'll turn this off and I'm going to just activate my world imagery base map. Uh, but good grief, look at the artifacts along the mosaicing of these images and different colors for the shallow water area. You know, it's just, it, I'll just say it could be a little bit better given our area of interest. So what do we do? Are we stuck with it? No way. I'm going to open world imagery way back, an app from Living Atlas. And I can just kind of go spelunking through time and see a version of the world imagery base map that looks a little bit better in this area. And I'll isolate it. And I'll grab its URL and then back in Pro, I can add this as a data layer and I'll just paste its path here, add it to my map and get rid of my old version 
actually my old slash new version of world imagery. This old world imagery looks better. I can deal with this. In the imagery tab, I'll choose raster functions. So many amazing tools. And I'm gonna activate hill shade. And I'm gonna apply this hill shade to my DEM. Look at this. Now I'm gonna blend that light and shadow into the underlying imagery. Much more dramatic, much more information about the terrain being presented in the map. I'm gonna turn back on my original square polygon note, and I'm gonna open up its properties and look at its elevation. Right now, by default, it's on the ground, but I can set it to an absolute height. And when I do this, it zeroes it out, and that polygon cuts through the actual terrain of my 3D scene. And I've effectively made a water layer. Now I'm going to duplicate this and give it a negative cartographic offset because I want to have a bottom to my little sliced out diorama. I'll name the top one water, I'll name the bottom one bottom, and I'll turn back on my original elevation, and I want to make this look all watery with like a dark deep blue at the bottom and a bright cyan at the top. And I'll fade away these shallower colors to fully transparent. And it looks aqua. I'll drag this down. I'm going to give like this neat kind of sense of depth to this underwater channel that cuts through the Straits of Mackinac. The things you can do with transparency within a gradient in Pro are so amazing and liberating. So let me look at the symbology for our water. Right now it's just semi-transparent blue, but I'm gonna give it a little gradient, like a specular gradient. Like we're flying over this area, and we're looking down at an airplane, and a little bit in the middle is bright, and it radiates out to a little bit less. And I'll make the edges quite transparent. We'll see what we've got. Yeah, that works. I mean, it seems crazy, but it works. Here's what the lakes actually look like in Lake Michigan. The ripples of the lake itself cast beautiful shadows on it and have highlights from the sun. So I went online and I got this image of wave ripple light effect on the bottom of a pool and I made it fully grayscale and I made it almost entirely transparent. And I can use this image as a picture fill. So I'm gonna go into the symbology, add a fill layer, and designate this fill as a picture fill. Then I'll navigate to my wavy pattern file and give it a size that you know looks pretty good. See how we've got the little waves here? Now when I hit apply, I've got something that looks suitably like a perturbed water surface. These are the tricks, people. So the big lakes look okay, but those little lakes just don't do it. Are we stuck with them? No, let's grab some data from the Michigan Open Data Portal. I'm gonna search for lakes. Fancy people call that hydrography. Here they are, a kajillion polygons, every lake in Michigan. I'm gonna download this shapefile and add it to my project. Then I can symbolize this to sort of match I'll give it a buffered gradient fill, give it a bunch of intervals so it's a smoother transition. And I'll go from a cyan color out to that deep blue. And look at this. Now I can just blend mode this right in with a soft light and it looks like it belongs. This is the kind of place where I'd like to chill out next to a lake. And I have. Time to do a layout. I'm gonna insert this map frame into my layout. And now I have to be uh, I have to make a choice because whatever position I give it here, I'm kind of stuck with it later because I'm going to add some static assets a little bit later. So this looks pretty good. I'll zoom in and I'm going to add a rectangle covering the whole layout because I want to give this map a dark gray background. I don't want just the transparent or white background. So I'm going to put this dark gray rectangle behind my map frame. And I'm going to insert a polygon, and now I'm going to begin to trace these dirt curtains on the side of my diorama. So what would it look like, and this is fast forwarding, what would it look like if we were to actually just take a knife and carve out this little bit of land from the earth? What would, what would, the, uh, what would the side of it be? So here's one wall on the left. And what would it look like? So here's some stone from uh, that picture of my dad throwing the rock over the Rio Grande. Can we use this? What if I were to just, you know, take this and grab a slice of this and isolate it as an image? Then I could use that as a picture fill for my polygon that I've just drawn. So 
I'm going to make the outline semi-transparent white and that fill, instead of a solid fill, I'm going to do a picture fill. I'll navigate to that picture of Bert Nelson throwing that rock. I'll give it a pretty good size and I'll orient it so it kind of matches the angle. And woo, now I've got a rocky site. It looks like a limestone cutaway of the geology of Michigan. I can just do the exact same thing for the right edge, draw that shape of the cutaway, and then fill it with a picture stroke. I'm going to open up that dirt curtain symbol and I'm going to add a symbol layer to this because I don't want it to be just a solid image rock of rock. It's kind of clunky. I'm going to give it a linear gradient. I'm going to add a little bit of color shade nuance to this. And I'll go from like a, a deep, I think it's called cherry cola, up to like a brighter sunny orange. And I'll make that fully transparent so it fades away. And we'll see what this looks like. Now oh, it looks, I don't know, it just kind of looks more dynamic and fun and interesting. And of course, I'll do the same thing to the other side, matching its orientation. And now I'm going to insert another just very basic polygon because I want to fake a shadow. I'm going to give this a gigantic stroke and I'll make it a gradient stroke that goes from fully opaque to fully transparent. And it looks like this. What am I doing? Well, check this out. Once I drag it underneath the map frame, I've created a nice drop shadow gradient under my map. And now this thing is starting to look real. It's been enthingified. These are the tricks, people. Speaking of tricks, here's an image I snagged of mammoth bones. Now, if you're from Michigan, you know that farmers are always digging up mammoth bones on accident. So here's a photograph of a mammoth, which I can kind of magic wand out the background from. And now I'm just going to zoom in to a cute little place here. I'm going to insert an image and drop my mammoth right there. Flip him upside down. He died some kind of crazy death and got compressed and his bones were fossilized. And nobody will know that that's there except for you and me and whoever else is watching this video. Life is too short not to embed little fun Easter eggs into your maps. Let's take a look at where this bridge is, the glorious Mackinac Bridge that connects the lower and upper peninsulas of Michigan. It's kind of wrapped onto the surface of the lake floor here. So I'm just going to add in a fake, fake little bridge with a little bit of... Uh, distance perspective here. I'll add the pillars to this thing, the amazing iron pillars. Give it a kind of a, a gray fill. I'll duplicate this, drop it on the other side of that channel. And this is, you know, from a distance, this is kind of how it looks. Here we go. Far from good, but good from far. But what are we even looking at? Let's add some labels to this. I've dropped in some text for Upper Peninsula, but it's just white. And I'm going to do a trick. I'll give it an italic font. And then I'll rotate it so its posts are vertical once more. And it gives it this nice dynamic sense. Rotated italic font. This is kind of a silly trick that graphic designers use to make stuff look kind of fun and cool. We can do the same thing. I'm going to give it a gradient. And I'll go from fully opaque white to fully transparent white. And I'll open up the properties for this gradient. And I'm going to rotate it so that it kind of matches the rotation of my text. Isn't that neat? Kind of looks like the text is rising up from the land. And I'll do the same thing for the lower peninsula, of course. Then it's just a matter of dropping in text for various places that I would like to label. So I've added some curved text here for Mackinac, but I want to make this look like it's kind of hovering above the deep. So I'm going to duplicate that solid fill. I'm going to give it a darker fill, and I'm going to give it a move effect. It's going to be semi-transparent. I'm going to offset it so it's a little bit lower. And now it just kind of looks like it's sitting there hovering slightly above the surface of the deep. And I think that that's pretty fun. And I'll just go bananas adding labels to all sorts of things, including the geologic cutaways. This is where we can name things like the Michigan Basin, Denovian stuff, right? But I mean, where are we? I need a sense of context and I can feel lost, especially if you're not familiar with Straits of Mackinac or Michigan and the fact that we're uh, standing in the Northwest looking Southeast. That's a different perspective. So let's add some context context to all of this. I'm going to insert a brand new map. I'll give it an imagery base map. I'm going to add some data. Once again, I'll hit living atlas and I'm going to look for hill shade. So terrain hill shade, and I'll blend that hill shade into my imagery using a soft light blend mode. I'll add some lakes, those lakes that I grabbed, and I'm going to make the lakes the same color as my maps map layouts background. Then I can just insert this right into my layout and what have i done it's like you know bob ross when he's got this great painting and then he just drops a tree 
right in the middle of it. Bob knows what he's doing. So we'll drag this overview underneath our map frame. And then I can just activate it and reposition it just so, so it looks pretty good. Give me enough context for what we're looking at. But do you see those hard edges at the top of our inset map? That's not perfect, but we aren't stuck with it. How do we create a fading out effect? How do you do like a fade mask for a, a map view or map? For, can you even do that in ArcGIS Pro? Well, you can kind of do it by doing a hack. So I'm going to get rid of that abrupt edge. I'm gonna insert a rectangle. And maybe you see this coming. I'm gonna draw a rectangle over my whole view. And then for the fill, I'm just going to give it a gradient stroke where the edge or a gradient fill where the edge color is that background color and then it transitions to fully transparent. So you get this kind of vignette sort of thing and I'll drop it in here and when I drag it to the right layer, now we've kind of got this faded transition from overview map to the background color. Again, these are the tricks. It's just a rectangle with a gradient that starts from fully transparent and then fully opaque to the background color. And it makes it look like that overview map has faded away. It's just a nice, gentle, subtle transition. Blending. Bob taught us all about blending. What about these things? What's worse? There's two of them. I can't stand these. You're stuck with them. It's the same exact thing repeated twice. It's the service layer credits and there's nothing you can do about them. The font is really ugly and I'm stuck and I'm scared. No, you aren't totally stuck with these. Watch this trick. In the insert menu, I'm going to go to dynamic text and I'll scroll almost all the way down as though they were hidden and I'll choose service layer credits. That's these guys. Now when I add this to the map, it removes the redundancy of them. I can reposition it and I can format their style so it looks exactly how I want and I'm not stuck with them as is. Give that a shot. So let's look, uh, we'll take a little closer look at our overview. It's time to draw an extent indicator. And because we're using 3D, I can't do a dynamic extent indicator. I'm just gonna draw a manual extent indicator and I'm gonna make it you know, white with a little bit of a white gradient fill. It's fully transparent white to a little bit of white opaque. And I do this because it looks kind of glassy. Why not? I'm going to duplicate the stroke. And this stroke, I'm going to give it that old gradient shadow stroke trick. And it'll go from fully transparent black to fully opaque black on the inner edge. And it now looks like it's this kind of neat little magnifier floating over our area of interest. Isn't that fun? Just little hacks like this. Gradients, my friends. Gradients. And then I'll just drop in an arrow to give an idea of what our perspective is, the viewer's perspective for our map. And now it's time to drop in a title. I just added some text and I did that trick of gradient fill for our text. In Pro, text is really just polygons. Anything you can style for polygon, you can apply to text, which is great. Now, my friends, we are done. Here it is with a little bit of post-processing. I like to crank up the contrast a little bit and maybe the saturation. And I definitely like to add little sparkly doodads. You could add interesting geological strata here in the cutaways. Here's the Delmarva Peninsula with a rockier looking crust. We've got just a hint of the Appalachians visible in the distance and then a pretty dramatic continental slope just offshore. Here are the Grampian Mountains of Southern Scotland, the beginning of the Highlands. Some really interesting landscapes there. In this one, in addition to the rocky cutaway graphic, I used a rippled sand surface for the undersea part and I really like how it came out. Here's a cutaway of the Seattle and Tacoma area with a few wildly out of scale Easter eggs. And feel free to combine the things you've learned in this video with previous videos where I make weird little micro world cutaways. Each technique has its own look and energy and you can smash them together to come up with something totally new. I'll link to those related videos in the description. I hope you try it out. It's an awful lot of fun and I definitely hope you show me the results.